This spring, we decided to take a massive risk on our first generation family farm and start a U-cut tree business from scratch on our normally productive horse hay farm. We worked together as a family to get everything planted and everything planned out. And we ended up planting 500 potted trees and 600 bare root trees from two different farms. Wanting them to get off on the best foot, we decided to go ahead and water them to make sure the roots got well established. Unfortunately, our watering techniques, as many as we've tried, proved to be a failure and the trees struggled in our, in our hard clay ground. As we watched all of the plant life around us struggle with the drought of summer, we knew we had to make a tough decision. Either risk losing many of our trees or look to a more aggressive options to keep these trees healthy and watered so that they could thrive into beautiful Christmas trees in five to seven years. All right, so we're here at Menards and uh, I cleaned out the SUV. I had to drive an hour to one of the largest Menards stores in the state of Michigan. But we got most everything here. Hopefully, we'll get it to fit. What are you doing? Oh man. A little bit okay. That's not as much as I thought it was gonna be. All right, so here's two that Eric pulled out. And here is the rest. So this whole thing is just stuffed. Alright, so we've got two lines around. We have our main feeder line right here, which is half inch. Uh, we probably could have gone with like a regular three quarter inch, but uh, that's just what we grabbed, I guess. And uh, then we have a line running all the way down here. So, so this is what we've done so far. We have our little cutter tool. So it cuts the line, and it's got a whole buster right there to pop a hole in. And uh, here's our T, our first T, and then right here is our on-off valve. What I've seen with this brand, you could just punch them right in the line. The other brands, you actually had to put something clamp over the line. Oh, and that's the piercer? Pierces. Well, that makes sense, because it's pointy. The other end's a different end? Mm -hmm. Did you get it in? This is the end clamp. That's pretty much in a nutshell what it does. It just kind of folds over the end. So we've got our hose here. It's connected and it's on. Here's our pressure regulator. So we have it on. Yep. Look at that. One gallon per hour. Our well does roughly 10 gallons a minute. So you can figure 600 gallons an hour that would run half the trees. Oh, okay. Okay, very good. Cut off at every line so we can run every line individual. If there's a line that needs more water, we'll just water that line more. Yeah, it's a it's a good way to go because you know we just don't know how many lines we're gonna need to do at a shot. So and we do have a pressure reducer. It goes down to 25 psi. I think your wells are at like 45 to 60 psi. We get our 10%, 11% rebate. We got it all from Menards. It's going to come out to be about a dollar per tree to run this system. Right, and I calculated out that it's the equivalent of 17 or 18 trees. If we weren't to do anything, there's a good chance we'd probably lose at least 17. Should we try to prick things? Are we going to prick it while it's full? I pushed one in while it was full. Oh, are we going to try that? I'm not sure exactly what that does. I think you just, just put over the line and push. Yeah, and then that and then you push this goes in. in. Yes. You can do it without it, but it pushes in pretty hard. Yeah. Oh, you already got this one done too? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not going to try pricking it first? I don't know. I'm a little nervous too. <laughs> it's going to squirt water out like an artery. It works okay if you do a twist oh. push. There you go. Here. Drink it up, buddy. Probably make them grow faster, too. I think so. I think it'll make them grow faster. I really wish we could have gotten this done at the beginning, but um, we were behind from the start. So it's like middle of June and we're putting in drip irrigation. But, you know, for us, like August is the worst time. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, shoot! <laughs> You could have worn 
and me are gonna do that. <laughs> ah! Oh my gosh! Can you imagine like every week out here besides the fact that if we're using the tractor to water every single week we're gonna compact the ground severely we're just gonna affect the pine tree growth <laughs> Eric got tired of carrying them so he's gonna drive it up there <laughs> which I mean there's like 15 of them so I guess that makes sense but it's still kind of funny All right, so this is Eric's first design model for the new spinning Eric. We do have a spinning Jenny, but I don't think it's gonna fit all this tubing on there. All right, we'll see how this one works. Well, I'd say overall, the spinning Eric is working very well. Oh, we didn't have it. We only had one hiccup where it got stuck. <sighs> so we've got three run and we have 16 more. 16 more to go. <laughs> Hi. I got a good system down. With the help of uh, this TYM. This actually works really good. This little gizmo I made. Ground is hard. That man won't even bug in. Just enough pressure to give it a little, little ball. So every, I got to figure out every fifth line. I'm skipping one because this is going to be a splicer line. You know, we're using our leftover two splicers. Oh, together. okay. Yeah. So we'll have a split. We got three splicer lines one there, one there, and then one down there. So I got it all spaced out. You know, I think they are curling downward because they're thirsty. I think so. That's because you look at the very first line, they're out straight, and yeah. that one actually got a little bit yeah. of water the other day. You definitely need to get water. And it wasn't even a lot of water. It was just a little bit of water that we ran through it. That's why we gotta get busted and get these drinks put in. Put in some extra overtime out here getting them things put in. putting T's and valves in so you line this up with your tree give it a snip wiggle this on wait don't you want the oh I see are actually pushing on harder because the sun has gone away. 
There, and then we put a little stake there. In. I can't believe how much harder those are pushing on with the sun that's on the way. There it goes. There it is. Carl's making a deposit down there. That tree's gonna be well fertilized. Eric is uh, taking the trash out with the TYM. <laughs> it is starting to cool off and the sun is going down. My average rate of attaching drippers is uh, one line every 30 minutes, which I don't feel is too bad. But, you know, 19 lines kind of adds up. There go the horses. All right, so we're gonna grab another one of these. These are 30. I'm gonna grab two of these. And my chew work pants, which will come in handy for this. Kitty. All right, so this is our little punch. I, it works pretty good most of the time. Some of the times it doesn't work. And then you actually have to use the pointy end of these. It's got a pointy end, which pokes right in. It's a lot harder to do it this way than with this. This is $14, so you might as well just get this and poke it in. So far, so good. This one did. Huh? I said that one did. Yeah. If it doesn't snap, then it's stuck. And these go in and snap in a lot place too. So like this little guy, he's got some green growth that's been popping open, but it still has the dead stuff right here. Um, so these branches will grow out. This is the new growth right here. This is the old growth that didn't die. I know a lot of people don't irrigate their Christmas trees, and that's fine, but then they also stand to take a massive loss if something goes wrong. Uh, in the long run, I think it's gonna be well worth it over the course of five years i don't think we'll have to keep irrigating them once they reach a certain height this guy turned out really good look at him so growth wise these guys are well behind the other trees down there but uh, hopefully they'll catch up especially with the drip irrigation system that's the plan all right so we have all of the lines put together except the ones that we have to splice together you can see we have all these many chunks of partial tubing rolls which are gonna get connected together actually there's a lot of them they're gonna get connected together for our extra lines and i'm guessing it's gonna take five five tubes five partials five partials so this one you can see this tree here has a lot of shock this is shock right here you can tell because the pine needles are pretty much sticking right on there and you can see it it's trying to recover trying to rebound with the new growth there and this one is also trying to but if we look at the new growth it's a lot more stunted it's kind of curling downward it's not a happy tree this one right here might not come back this one might have too much shock actually this one looks like it already died 
you can see that it sprouted new growth right here and right here and probably due to not enough water um, it just ended up dying and we actually have several of those here's another one right here and you can see this one didn't even try to open up um, this one didn't produce any new growth and these are going downward so when they start slicking down like that that's a good sign that it's not getting enough water so had we installed this at the very beginning we probably would have lost far fewer trees than what we're losing right now you can tell a lot of them are dying just from drought so we picked up some new connectors these are easy connectors and now you can see that the tubing on the inside is all the same the nice thing about the true work pants is you can literally fill the pants with all of your connectors and uh you know, they survive all the kneeling and you don't get grass poked into your knees, stuff like that. All right, you ready? Yep. You gonna do the dragon? Is it a fire breathing dragon? That was a mom joke. <laughs> a mom joke? <laughs> What's a mom joke? I've only heard of dad jokes. That was a mom joke. So there was some discussion that since we're running all this irrigation lines, maybe if we have enough left over, I could run some to my fruit trees because my fruit trees would really appreciate it. Some like shark bite fitting. That looks as much of a pain in butt as the other one, which is supposed to be the easy pass. All right, so we're going to try out a new uh, tool we got here. We went to Menards and we found a couple extra tools that we thought would be really handy. And my thumb is certainly wishing that we would have had at the very beginning, but. All right, so we have this little thing. It's for these T connectors. Because I could not even put these things in last time. Do you want to try it? I want to see you do it first. And you might need to wear rubber gloves to get a good grip on that line. It looks like it's a little bit easier, but I think if you had you a You gotta do back and forth wiggle. Right. But I think if you had a rubber glove on, then you'd be able to grip that line without it sliding. Yeah, but can you do the other side? That's kind of a dumb idea. Yeah, that is kind of dumb. Daniel looking so happy. I got my special pocket for my nippers. All right, so we picked up another tool. Is this line gonna be tight in here? All right, so Eric's gonna try out our new tool. That seemed like it went really fast. <laughs> it went in like butter. Wow. <clears throat> so this is a one and done tool. Is it in all the way? There, look at that. Pretty cool. So do you think this is saving your elbow? Or do you think it still requires a little bit of effort? They go in pretty easy. All right, so I'm gonna give this a try and put a couple in and see how well it works for me. Eric's got a little bit more strength, but as you can see. No, they push in really easy. All right, so this guy is the next one up. One pushing. Yeah. Honestly, because like sure. throwing that in there and then. Yeah, but once you get going, I'm sure it doesn't take very long. It's almost better to go from the other side. Yeah. That definitely went in easy. This is definitely easy. So now I'm going to try. I'm going to try and see what happens if I punch a hole first and then use this. It didn't require a whole lot of effort to use this, but. Um, the advantage of punching a hole first is that the hole goes exactly where you need it. Whereas if you have to push it in with something like this or your hand, it might slide. There's 30 in each here. Okay, snap that in. And we're gonna put this in. Yep. 
Yeah. All right, now we're gonna try this one again, just on its own. All right, so I guess my thought is you can still punch through the back using this because right here when the line gets soft, it tends to flatten. See how it's kind of flattening? And uh, it's not such a big deal if it's cold, but if it's warm, then it flattens more and then you can punch all the way out through the back still. So that is one of the hazards of just using this or you might slide and stab yourself in the hand, which was my fear. I think honestly a two person system would be the best way to go. One person using this and then the next person coming through with this and stabbing it in. I think that'd be the best, fastest way. Otherwise just uh, punch them in and then either use this if you've got in one that struggles or use your hand. But I think it's worth having these on hand just to use. It took about a week to get the entire system up and running. We had a total of 19 lines, I believe, and each line has about 64 trees on it. Each tree has one little dripper, which will put out about one gallon per hour. Now with this system, you really need to make sure and check how many lines you can water at a time. So it was a lot of going back and forth, turning on different lines to see how many lines we could actually run. It's a long involved process considering that it takes a while for the water to travel all the way down to the back end of the trees. But when we were finally done, we figured out that we could run roughly four to five lines per watering session and even the back and even the last most taps will still produce about a gallon per hour of water. I only wish we would have thought to try this earlier. It probably would have saved several of our trees. Now, in the tree planting world, it is very common to have die-off. Um, with the potted trees, the die-off rate is approximately 10%. We planted 500 of those, so 10% would be about 50 trees. So you would expect on any given new planting year to lose 50 of your newly potted trees. That is a lot of trees. And if we can save those 50 trees by just um, spending a little extra money and putting in an irrigation system, I honestly think it will be well worth it in the long run. As far as the bare root trees, they have a worse track record for longevity. And in the first year, you can expect to lose anywhere from 15 to 20% of your trees. And again, that's not doing anything, just maybe putting a little fertilizer and leaving them. Like right here, this one is obviously toast. Um, this one is one of our bare root trees. Because honestly, with the bare root trees at 20%, we would expect to lose 120 trees our first year of planting, just because the bare root trees have a tendency to not do very well. That is a lot of trees to have to go through and replant and try to match up with the rest of your group. So if you can prevent that by just installing a little bit of irrigation, then I think you're gonna be ahead in the long run. All right, so we got it all done this morning. Um, my muscles are so sore. I don't remember which line it was we were looking at. Was it four? I don't remember that it was all droopy. Anyway, if it was four, this is what line four looks like. He's perked up, he's perked up. He's starting to perk up, still needs probably a little bit more. Um, and the rest of them are looking really good down this line. Uh, we still might end up losing some just because of root damage. Live and learn. I mean, we didn't think that we'd have to install this. We didn't know what the pricing would be. Most people don't. So we're getting a jump ahead on everything by installing this. And since this is our first planting, Hopefully, we're gonna have a jump on future years to come. Now, when these trees were planted, they were planted in a mass pile. Think of seeding lettuce or seeding grass where you've got lots of plants all stacked up on top of each other. Now, if your grass is long and straight, it's not a big issue. But if you get something bunchy like a pine tree or a fir tree, what we noticed with these bare root trees was that they were so interwoven in their roots, it was impossible to separate them without damaging the roots. They were set up in groups of 10. So if you count 10 trees, you can probably count 10 dead trees. 
And I know that there are several groups where the roots had to be broken in order to get them even apart. I don't know for sure that that was the cause, but I would dare to hedge my bets on that being the cause. I don't think there's a problem with planting bare root trees per se, but I really think you have to be careful what source you get them from. I think if you're just starting out, I think a mixture of bare root and potted trees are really essential to have. In case you have a massive die off, you can compare the two zones. We know that our planting technique is on par because we only had just a couple of our potted trees that seem to be on the verge of dying. And actually I see two that are questionable. So this is one of our Frasers. You see his coloring overall is very yellow. Um, his new growth is having some issues too. Maybe it's not the fertilizer, maybe it's just lack of water. So we're gonna have to really make sure that everybody gets some good drinks so that they can survive the summertime. The rest of the Frasers are looking fantastic. Except for this one guy right here. This guy looks like he totally kicked the bucket. He did have some new growth coming on, um, but it never opened up. So I'm guessing that when the heat hit, he just didn't get enough water, and so all of this died off. But considering we only lost two so far, I think we did pretty good. Two out of 500, very good odds. <sighs> And I don't know yet how many on the bare root trees. All right, now let's go check on the bare root trees that we planted way back in our back field that have not been touched since the day I planted them. No water, no fertilizer, nothing. <laughs> oh, this is all our second cutting hay. Look at that. Man, it's getting tall. I need to blast this with some good nitrogen, probably. Christmas trees are set it and forget it, right? That's how most farms operate. It's just not feasible to go through and have to irrigate all the Christmas trees. Honestly, we were surprised that we'd had to irrigate the ones up front, but it wasn't a huge deal since we did have water up front and we could manage it. Back here, it was a different story. It was any man's guess as to how these trees would actually survive with no water, no fertilizer, and nothing at all. And honestly, I was shocked. Despite the drought, despite everything, none of the trees died. So I think this area will be a good area to plant in the future as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really enjoyed seeing you guys again. Thank you for all of your comments. I do enjoy reading through them. If you guys have any questions about our Christmas trees or if you have a Christmas tree farm, Put your comments down below. We really enjoy hearing all of your different suggestions. We're so excited to watch them grow and they have grown so much already. Take care guys. I hope you have an amazing week. Love you. Until next time, see you later. Bye.